so you generally have questions like x plus y salt that means they will not generally write like this they will write x plus salt of metal y gives salt of metal x and the element or the metal y so can x be calcium and y be sodium that is the question can is this combination of x and y possible for this reaction so you'll see that and they'll obviously uh, whenever there is a can or say yes or no sort of a question you always have to give the reason you can't just write yes or no the reason is always implied even if though it is not given the question you have to write the reason so this x is calcium and y is a salt of sodium let us consider it as sodium chloride and you have calcium so can calcium knock out sodium it means in the reaction this is happening that x is knocking out y and making a salt of x and giving y so can calcium knock out sodium from its salt the answer lies in the reactivity series you'll see that sodium is higher than calcium in the reactivity series so since calcium is lower than sodium it cannot knock an element which is higher than itself from from its salt solution it cannot displace so this reaction is not possible and hence but they are saying that this reaction is happening so can this uh, x and y be calcium and magne uh, calcium and sodium so the answer is no and the reason and the reason is that calcium is lower than sodium in the reactivity series so it can't displace sodium from its salt solution so this is the correct answer and if this question was if x is sodium and y is calcium then the answer would also have flipped because calcium is lower than sodium so sodium will obviously be able to displace calcium from its salt so that is why the reason will be yes and the uh, the answer will be yes and the reason will be that sodium is higher than calcium so it can knock out a lower uh, a, an a metal lying lower than it in the reactivity series so it can displace calcium uh, use the word displace knock out is just for your understanding they'll also give you questions similar questions like um zinc and feso4 gives zneso4 plus fe is this reaction possible so you will just check the reactivity series you'll find that zinc is above iron in the reactivity series so it has the ability to displace iron from its salt so it and it is displacing in this reaction so that is why 
the reaction is possible. In here also you have to give the reason. And for giving the reason, you have to remember the reactivity series. Just remember that these potassium, sodium, calcium, these, these elements are very, very reactive. So they will always lie at the top of the reactivity series. Then you have aluminium, zinc, medium reactivity, aluminium, zinc, iron, lead. These will lie somewhere in the middle. And then you have copper, hydrogen, silver, gold, mercury. These will lie lower in the reactivity series. So if you get, if you are, uh, don't, if you can't memorize the reactivity series fully, at least memorize, at least get an idea that uh, this, these lie towards the top, these lie more or less in the middle and these lie more or less towards the bottom. You can always get an idea that silver and gold will always lie at the bottom most of the series because they are noble metals and they are very unreactive. So they will lie at the bottom most. And you can also get that potassium, sodium, they will always lie at the top most. So of course, learn the reactivity series, but if you are just unable to learn it fully, then just try and memorize it like this. And then you try and uh, sort this. First sort the elements into low reactivity, high, medium reactivity and high reactivity. Then the high reactivity, you just make some guesses that potassium, sodium, calcium, magnesium, they I mean, you can try and memorize this. Then you can try aluminium, zinc, iron, lead. And then you have hydrogen, copper, mercury, silver, gold. So try and memorize the series as a whole because the questions which come from reactivity series are very easy. You just need to know the reactivity series and you can just do the questions. So it's a scoring part. Next, we come to this topic of the actual metals and non-metals, right? Till now, we were studying metals separately, non-metals separately. But now, we are going to study them together. That is, compounds of metals and non-metals. That means compounds formed by the reaction of metals and non-metals. So the obvious compounds which come to our mind would be sodium chloride, magnesium, then again all the chlorides, magnesium chloride, calcium chloride, aluminium chloride, all the chlorides. Then you have maybe uh, sodium oxide, you have magnesium, again the, they are the same set of things, magnesium oxide, calcium oxide. And then you have other compounds like sodium sulfide, like and there are many other compounds. So, we are going to study about these compounds made up of metals and non-metals. <laughs>